All right, let's talk about graphing tangent and cotangent. And uh, I'm going to assume that if you're watching this, you've already watched how I graph sine and cosine because uh, I'm going to go a little quickly on some parts of this because it's essentially the same process. Uh, the pattern is different, and we'll give this graph. It's obviously a different graph. But uh, So we have this and uh, some features of this thing. Uh, first, we have a period. So you might notice that uh, this period is kind of weird. Um, it starts kind of at a midpoint and then goes to what I call a high point, then there's an asymptote in the middle of it, then there's a low point and back to a middle point, and you kind of fill it in, it looks all weird. Uh, there's a better period that we can use, and the better period is right here. So uh, this is, you know, it's sandwiched between two asymptotes, and you get asymptote, low, middle, high, and then asymptote. That's a much nicer period, so that's the one that we're going to kind of refer to. Um, so. There are a couple key features, I just kind of highlighted them for you. So you got an asymptote, and then following the asymptote, what you're going to have is a low point that you're going to plot, then a middle point that you'll plot, um, a high point, and then you'll close off one period with another asymptote. And uh, the low point, middle point, and high point are sort of analogous to the minimum sinusoidal axis and maximum of a sine or cosine graph. Um, and that's going to be important for us. So there's five key things, and that should also kind of ring a bell, uh, because when we were graphing sine and cosine, we had five key things. So let's say we have y equals a, and then tangent of the quantity bx plus c, uh, then plus d, or we could have cotangent of the same stuff. Uh, let's talk about how you compile all the things we need. So uh, we have the period, and this is a major difference. The period for um, tangent and cotangent the uh, natural period is pi, so to find the period of any uh, transform graph, it's going to be pi over b. So that's a big difference, probably the number one mistake that people make. Um, increment, it's going to be exactly the same as it was for sine and cosine, so that's going to be the period divided by 4. Um, starting point, again, is just going to be whatever's in parentheses, uh, set to equal to 0, and then solve. So we have bx plus c equals 0, and then solving that, that gives us x equals the opposite of c over b, but again, you're just going to set d equal to 0 and solve, so don't bother memorizing that. Um, the middle points that we find are actually going to be located at y equals d, and uh, so I'll tell you, that's analogous to the sinusoidal axis, so I'm going to put that in quotes, um, and sometimes when I talk about it, I kind of say, where's the sinusoidal axis? I don't really mean that. I mean, where do we put the middle points? Uh, there are high points, and that's going to be at... Uh, y equals d plus the absolute value of a, so that's the same as how you found the uh, maximum for sine or cosine. And then there are low points. And uh, again, this is really similar to finding the minimum. So it's going to be d minus the absolute value of a. And that'll take you to a minimum, or a, well, that's your low point with, like, the minimum. Uh, now we need some patterns. So there's different patterns for tangent and cotangent, and um, it's based on whether a is greater than zero or less than zero. So if a is greater than zero, the pattern for tangent will be middle point, high point, asymptote, low, middle. So starting at the starting point, it's middle, high, asymptote, low, middle. Um, if a is less than zero, it becomes middle, low, asymptote, high, middle. Uh, cotangent has a slightly different pattern, and the pattern is uh, going to be asymptote, high, middle, low, asymptote. So uh, all of the middle points for a tangent graph become asymptotes for the corresponding cotangent graph. Um, the highs and lows remain the same, but the asymptotes of tangent become the uh, middle points of cotangent. If you think about it, that makes sense, so uh, try thinking about it. And then if a is less than zero, the um, high and low are going to switch again. So asymptote, low, middle, high, and asymptote. And uh, I'll put a special note there. If you change the sign of a, you uh, switch the highs and the lows. So every high becomes low, every low becomes high. All right, let's graph one. We're going to graph y equals 2 tangent of the quantity 3x plus pi, and then the whole thing minus 1. So we want to collect the information. So the first thing is a period. And again, this is the major mistake that people make. It's only pi divided by b, so that'll be pi over 3. Increments, same as it always has been. That's period divided by 4, so pi over 12. Uh, starting point. You take whatever's in parentheses, set it equal to 0, so that'll give me 3x plus pi equals 0, and then obviously that gives you um, negative pi over 3, but we want the same denominator for the increment and the starting point, so negative 4 pi over 12. Let's find the middle point. That's going to be same as sinusoidal axis idea, so y equals negative 1. 
uh, a high point is going to be, uh, we're at negative 1, we can go up 2, so that's going to be 1. A low point, we start at negative 1, we go down 2, so that takes us to negative 3. And then we need to think about the pattern. So A is greater than 0, so that's going to give us middle, high, asymptote, low, middle. All right, so what I'll do now is I'm going to set up an x-axis. So uh, skipping ahead a little bit. I put uh, the starting point in the dead center. And now what I do for tangent, uh, if you watch for sine and cosine, I always go two boxes per increment. Tangent graphs look really stupid if you do that. They're too stretched out. So I'm going to go one box per increment. Um, but I'm only going to label every other increment. So I uh, went negative 4 pi over 12. I skipped negative 3 pi over 12. Went to negative 2 pi over 12, um, negative pi over 12. I didn't put 0 because I'm going to put the y-axis there, and then 2 pi over 12 and 4 pi over 12. And I can go in the other direction pretty much the same way, so let's just fill that out. Uh, I'm going to put in the y-axis, uh, and you know I'm just going to label that up the normal way. So what I want to do is I need to start at the starting point. So that's uh, negative 4 pi over 12, and it's going to be a middle point. So I put a point at negative 1. I move over one increment and I go up to the high point, I move over an increment and I put in a vertical asymptote. Move over an increment and I'll be at the low point, I move over again and I'm at the middle, the high, another vertical asymptote, and then another low and middle, because that's all I can fit. Uh, if I want to go backwards from the starting point, I'm going to go, I start in a middle, I go to a low, then an asymptote, and then it'll be a high middle, low, asymptote, so we're going backwards, and then high, middle would be the next two things, but I didn't bother. Alright, now we got to sketch this in. I never really do a tangent curve in one thing, I kind of sketch it in the way you might have seen an artist kind of sketch. I'm no artist, but uh, the way I've seen artists sketch things in. So uh, I'll do this part right here, and then I'll kind of go down to negative infinity there, then uh, curve up a little bit there. It kind of looks like you're taking an x cubed graph and just squeezing it between asymptotes. Go up like that, and then kind of finish this off. So just kind of fill in what you can. Again, just kind of sketch it in. It's a lot harder if you try to go in one shot. Um, and there you go. That's your graph. So let's take a look at one cotan graph. So y equals negative cotangent of x over 5 and then the whole thing plus 2. So uh, to get the information we need the period. That's going to be pi divided by 1 fifth, which is 5 pi. The increment is the period divided by 4, so 5 pi over 4. The starting point is just x equals 0, so we have x over 5 equals 0, but that just gives you x equals 0. Um, the middle point is y equals 2. I can go up 1 to get to the high point. I can go down 1 from 2 to get to the low point. And then since a is less than 0 and it's cotangent, the pattern is going to be asymptote, low, middle, high, asymptote. And now I am pretty ready to graph. So what I do is uh, put in the x-axis, kind of mark it up. So since the starting point is 0, I'm just going to put the y-axis in there. Um, and then if I label everything, again, I'm going to go one box per increment, but I'm only going to label every other one because the graph just looks way too crowded otherwise. So to start with, uh, we put in an asymptote. It's kind of dissatisfying, but it's the way it goes. Um, now we're going to go a low point, a middle point, a high point, and an asymptote. And then low middle. And then if I go in the opposite direction, it's high, middle, low, and then asymptote. And uh, I think maybe I want one more. So we go high, middle, low, asymptote. So if you're going from left to right, it's asymptote, low, middle, high, asymptote. Just write down the pattern and follow it. Um, and now we want to kind of get our graphs in here. So it's actually a little easier. Uh, the less stretched out the graph is, the easier it is to make. So I fill this in. And uh, there you have it. And just like with secant and cosecant, the graph is really useful for stating the domain. Um, for example, here, I know that x can't be 0, and then it can't be 20 pi over 4, so which is just 5 pi. So the domain would be all real numbers except for 0 plus 5 pi times n, where n is an element of the integers. Uh, so I recommend that you take a look at the graph, or at least figure out how to graph before you state the domain, because it's a really useful thing. Um, you also probably would notice right away that a negative cotangent graph looks exactly like a tangent graph. Um, and that's always going to be an issue for us. If we don't have the equation, it's really hard to tell what was originally graphed. Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful, and good luck!